Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. Today, we're taking questions from you, our viewers. So if you're watching, you know it's Monday. It's our live broadcast. Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. Well, the question for today's show, it went like this. How may suffering, fear, and death be used as clues to give us hope of everlasting life? And one of the things that in the midst of our sorrows and our miseries and our sufferings, maybe we can't see a clue, maybe we don't have a clue, but we have to believe in hope and in faith that guess what? This isn't the end of the story. And the suffering may appear great at the moment. Mm. That tsunami that hits us and overtakes us with sorrow and sadness, but it's not the end of the story. And I've learned in our living uh, to sing to sing in the midst of my suffering. It lifts my spirit. It doesn't change the suffering sometimes, but there's always a song to be sung and God's ears always want to hear that, our praise. That's a beautiful illustration of what we're trying to get across. Um, so it doesn't belittle sufferings, death, tragedy, COVID, uh, the response to George Floyd's killing and what's taking place. And, and we feel overwhelmed that just in our own lives there are things going on perhaps we never thought would happen in our lives. And where's God's fingerprints on this? Even if he's not done it, where is he? Where is the clue? And, mm. and Monsignor Brian Bransfield, we had him on our show some time back. He's written a book called Everlasting Life. And uh, we're gonna have him on in just a few minutes to talk for a couple of minutes on that mm. book because I, I thought of him when I was thinking of what we're going through as a nation in this world and personal sufferings, what could be a clue that God could take this evil and turn it into a good, a curse yes. and turn it into a blessing. That, that as we examine what's taking place, we see the fingerprints of the devil, the fingerprints of death. But then we look a little bit more closely, like Mary. She took all these things in and she pondered them in her heart. And all of a sudden we look more closely. We ask God for help or somebody comes to us and they start looking among all the clues and they say, oh look, there's another fingerprint here. It's the fingerprint of God. Oh, there's other DNA here. There's the DNA of the devil, DNA of the... This is Jesus Christ's mm -hmm. DNA that's here. What was he doing on the scene of this crime or on the scene of this devastating thing? You get it? And so we're asking you today, um, have you ever experienced devastation and fear and all these things and somehow looked another way and tilted your head or examined it a bit more closely? Or help, help somebody else through that situation and you say, well, here's another clue. Here's a fingerprint. Here's a thread because the word clue, C-L-U-E, comes from the old English word clue. I guess Father mm -hmm. will share about this, Monsignor will share about this. But it meant a thread, mm -hmm. a thread. And sometimes you, you, you get a thread and you follow the thread and it unravels and it leads you someplace. So in the midst of what we can't see, and sometimes we, we can't see much of anything, it's just totally dark. And we have to be very gentle as we look at this or as we help other people to examine devastating situations because it's, it's mysterious mm -hmm. and, and it's painful. But somehow in the midst of that, even the the cross, which was foolishness to the Greeks and which was um, evil. Cursed be the one on the cross. But through further observance of the cross of Jesus Christ, oh, it's the gift of salvation. It's the joy of salvation. God has taken death and Satan and evil and has somehow through this misery and torture turned it to eternal life. Yes. So that's, that's a clue. That's a great Get, clue. And the problem is we don't got a clue. But, right. But if you look closer, there are plenty of clues to lead you to everlasting life. Right, and as a family, you know, as we're coming out of this whole COVID pandemic, and, you know, my prayer, my daily prayer, is that this COVID virus, this COVID pandemic, that this thing would disappear from the planet. Mm -hmm. and the other thing that I'm praying about, and I shared this in our prayer group this morning, was is that, you know, all the, the peaceful protesters that are out there, um, not the ones that are rioting and, and making, wreaking havoc, 
but the peaceful protesters out there that are wanting justice, that we all join hands and, and even take a step back and say, I want justice. I want justice for every human being from the moment of conception until natural death. Wherever there is injustice in our land, we want justice. We want peace. We want it set right for every human being. And so those are the things that we work for. Those are the things. And look for the people, as Mr. Rogers always said, would say to the children, look for the helpers. And he says that to us, to the child within us, who might think like, what, is this going to stop? When, when, when is this going to change? And it is going to change, but it's going to change for a greater good for all of us. So we're here for you. 1-800-221-9460. Call us now. Are there any clues in devastation, death, fear? We want to hear from you. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking questions during our live show. So if you're watching at your home, you know it's Monday, it's a live broadcast. Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can reach us at 205-271-2980. And you can send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at ewtn.com and always check us out on Facebook. Well, the question that we put out there for today's show is, how may my suffering and fear and death be used as clues to give us hope of everlasting life? Joy, I believe that we have with us uh, Monsignor J. Brian Bransfield. We hope that you're here, Monsignor. And we alluded to you and to your book and to your time with us some years back on Everlasting Life. And you're no stranger to EW10. You've appeared on numerous shows. But are you there, Monsignor? I am, Jim and Joy. It's a pleasure to be with you and to be with all of your listeners on this very important question. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, Monsignor, your thoughts. Uh, you've written a book on Everlasting Life, and we shared a little bit about the clues that we might be given in death and so on. We're thinking about COVID. We're thinking about... Uh, the injustice and, and evil done to uh, Mr. Floyd, his death, the responses. You know, how do we find God in the midst of this possibly? How do we go about that? How do we help others? I think it's such an important question. And, you know, when we face death, and all of us to some extent have faced the death of loved ones, of friends, of people close to us, death creates something new. It creates a new longing in us. Suffering creates a longing in us. Uh, when we see other people suffer, we create a, a longing for justice is created. But in particular, death, when someone we love dies, the longing of grief comes into us, and grief is a new way to love. That's really what grief is. And grief itself, mourning, loss of one we love, is a clue. And some clues are just too big to fit under a microscope. And loss, longing, grief, when we feel sorry the one we've lost and we miss them, that's a big clue to faith. Mm. To, 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 to faith blind with tears sometimes can see things that tearless eyes can't. Our tears tell us something. Uh, when I lost my mom at 12 years old and, and went to her funeral and saw her laid out there, what, what an incredible loss and pain and hurt. But an intuition was born in me that she helped me with through prayers. And it takes years to see that. But we shouldn't use other things to fill the emptiness that loss oh. creates in us. We should use prayer, the sacraments, talking with a spiritual director, with a priest, with a religious, with friends, uh, that we're meant for more. Yes. And that's what loss teaches us. That's oh. why we long for the one we miss, because we're still connected with them through faith in everlasting life. Yes. Monsignor, those are such important insights that have helped me personally with the sense of loss that I have, like you, over the loss of my mother when I was five years old. Um, and it was just important what you said here, which I didn't 
here in the book. It's like, don't, don't fill that void mm. with other things right. and so on and so forth. Like, that space belongs to that person and your grief in the midst of that, and that could be an opportunity to learn more. And that is just really, really critical. Everybody's grief is a little bit different, but we don't want to go around filling it up with things and people that replace this other person. This person is irreplaceable, and we yearn for them, and that's a sign of everlasting life, isn't it? That there must be exactly. more. That this is exactly. an intrusion. That I, somehow, some way, I know people die in this life, but somehow that person shouldn't have died. And you know what? That's right. We shouldn't die, but it's, it's here. You're right. And that's why I wrote Life Everlasting, The Mystery and the Promise from my own life, from, from my own experience of losing my mom and losing other people. Close. Yeah. The, the whole sense when I was 12 was she shouldn't have died. Right. And that shouldn't have died created a longing in me, a yearning. And the yearning was right. And it put me on a search. It put me on a search for God. It's where my priestly vocation comes from to find this God who is so large that he gives us great gifts. And, and when someone dies, we have to cry. We have to talk it out. We have to, you know, if we see their eyeglasses or we see their keys or we see some of their clothes left, that we, we have this sense of what's in their closet, what was on their writing desk. It triggers the longing, yeah. and the longing is related to the longing for God. Beautiful. The, yes. Well, you know, you, sh you shared about um, when we have a suffering or a loss, that it teaches us a new way to love. <laughs> And mm -hmm. I think of what's going on in our nation with these riots and, um, you know, the suffering and the injustice of, of the killing of Mr. Floyd. Um, it, we got to pray and hope as a people of God that a greater good is going to come out of this and that that, too, can teach us a new way to love. Now, we're not seeing some of that manifested uh, throughout the country, but, but there, is, there are more peaceful protests happening that just aren't making the media attention um, to say, is this an injustice? Teach us a new way to love, right? Exactly. And how do we rediscover each other underneath any natural, good, holy differences that we have? How do we rediscover the face of the other and let go of hate, misunderstanding, alienation, especially violence? Violence does not the last word. Mm. Death does not Amen. the last word. Mm. Peace yeah. does. Christ yeah. does. Amen. Monsignor, thank you so much for being with us today. We need to get you back on At Home with Jim and Joy. So thank you for your contribution. We're going to have people calling in. We're going to share further on this theme. Thank you for the hope you give to us in life everlasting. God bless well, you now, Monsignor. Thank you, Jim and Joy, and your listeners. Thank you. Our, our pleasure. You know, you know it's one of your favorite books when you go back again and again to it yes. because it's just so practical. And I think, again, his focus in that book was mainly on death. And what clues are there there? It's so devastating. It seems like death wins. But I think it can be brought into other areas, like we were saying, like mm -hmm. injustice and betrayal and whatever it might be. It's so painful. It's so there. But, but, but we need to, to reflect. We need to say, Lord, wh where's your fingerprints? Where are your markings? Where's your hand on this? So we want you to call in. Call us now if you, if you get what we're trying to say here. How has suffering and pain and justice, fear, somehow, some way, not just been used in your life to kind of, you know, break us down, uh, but, but to turn it around? And like Monsignor was saying, every, if you have injustice in your life and you're mad about it, you know why you're mad about it? Because there's justice. Right. If you have death in your life and you're mad about it, you know why you're mad about it? Because there's eternal life. Mm -hmm. If you have betrayal, that you've committed or that somebody's committed against you and you're mad about it, that's right, because there's loyalty and faithfulness right. and commitment. That's the ultimate. That's the thread. That's the way of everlasting life. Right, and that's the way that we as a people, that we heal, that we repair the damage that is done, that we restore humanity and the goodness of ourselves. You know, I, I see it in Birmingham, and I know it's happening in other cities too, where people came in and they rioted, and you know, that was only just a percentage of the protest, and, and they came and they did destruction. But then out of that came a greater good. People came out and they, they painted murals and they did beautiful things, and they're, they're, they're saying there's gonna be another face that's gonna be painted here. There's going to be another look that's going to happen here. Yeah. There's going to be another way that we're going to yeah. create. And, you know, I like to quote um, 
Archbishop Fulton Sheen when he says, the devil may have his hour, but God will have his day. And we, is, we have to believe that. Yeah, you look at it and you think, what is happening? Who's winning? God is winning. God always wins. And you know what always wins? Love. Mm. Love always wins. We have a, a message here from Facebook. God is bigger than any problem. He is more powerful than any tyrant. He is the brightest light, and he will not allow darkness to emanate from any soul who loves and lives for him. He is always with us, even when we feel alone. We're not alone. We just have to listen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for embracing us and surrounding us with your loving protection. Amen. This is Rena on Facebook. It's a powerful, powerful statement. Right. And, and, and it's true. And so we as a people of God, you know, whenever anything is going on, death, suffering, injustice, anything that you want to get involved in, you are personally responsible to respond, not in anger, not in hate, because then you're just more part of the problem, you know, and, and you want to you wanna respond in peace. You know, I had a situation the other day at the center. I had a client, you know, uh, it was very hot here in Birmingham. She had to take a bus to get to our classes. We started our so classes back center, up, right? Yeah. We run a pregnancy medical center. She took a bus to the center. You know, at the end I said, well, how are you getting back? And she said, well, I'm going to walk, which is probably about a, a mile and a half from our center to the bus station. Mm -hmm. And you know, I could have let her walk. I said, no, you get in my car and I'm gonna drive you to the bus yeah. station. And she just like looked at me. I had a minute, it wasn't a lot. Just got her in the car and, and took her. And at the end, you know, it, it's a pretty dismal situation, you know. Everybody thinks, oh, having a baby is great and wonderful. Well, there are some people that are suffering when they're having a baby, and it's difficult. And that's why pregnancy medical centers are there throughout the country. So you know what? You can come up alongside somebody and say, I'm going to be your family through this journey, and I'm going to love you, and I'm going to be with you. And you know what? You're not alone. That's right. And we're going to help you through yeah. this. Another email. When I contrast the suffering and death in the world with the beauty of God's creation all around me, I'm confident that there is eternal life. Jesus said there would be trials in this world, but if we place all our trust in him and persevere to the end, we shall join him forever. This is Frank from Madison, Wisconsin. These are great, great statements right. of faith. And you know, the story you were telling, George, was an interesting one because you know, we're talking about difficult circumstances, situations, and trying to find a fingerprint of God on them. And sometimes we're the fingerprint. Right. Sometimes we're the clue. Sometimes we're the thread. So there are some people that are in situations, and then you say, I'll give you a ride. I'll mm -hmm. take you to this place. You don't have to walk. I'll do this for you. And guess what? They might be despairing about God, if anybody cares. And you're their clue. Right. You're their clue that there really is a God, that life is greater than death and that good is greater than evil, and that everlasting life is greater than eternal mm. damnation. Isn't it great to be a Christian and to be a Catholic? We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Thank you so much for your participation. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, we're going to check in with Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, it looks like things are slowly returning to normal there in your beloved Rome. Tell us what's happening. Well, hi, Jim and Joy. And of course, it's wonderful to be back with you again in Pius XII Square, just outside of um, St. Peter's Square, as we were last week for the first time after after many months and actually it's a good thing to be here today because I want to tell you a couple of hours ago we had a rainstorm I don't know if I could even describe. In any event, um, for the second Sunday in a row the Holy Father was at the window of his study that overlooks in the Apostolic Palace that overlooks St. Peter's Square and he 
recited the Angelus yesterday to the the small group of people in the square, probably like last week, 150 or, or 200 people. And um, the Vatican, um, he prayed the Angelus, by the way, which is the prayer we say now that Easter's over. Easter through Pentecost, we recite the Regina Chaley, and then after Easter in all year long is the Angelus. Now, interestingly enough, yesterday, for the very first time in its history, the Holy See Press Office released English and Spanish translations of the Holy Father's remarks in Italian because he normally gives the address and, and prays in Italian. But they released the uh, two languages of that. Now, before the Angelus Prayer, the Holy Father spoke of the day celebration of the Holy Trinity. And uh, after he prayed, he then had some other personal reflections. But I want to tell you my favorite part of his remarks on the Trinity. I don't know if we think too much about the Trinity itself. He said, God the Father so loves the world that to save it, he gave what is most precious to him. His only begotten son, who gave his life for humanity, rises again, returns to the Father, and together with him sends the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is therefore love, all in the service of the world that God wishes to save and recreate God, the Trinity, of course. Now, after the Angelus prayer, the Holy Father spoke to the faithful again, and he said that their presence, even though it was small, he said, your presence here is a sign that the most acute phase of coronavirus in Italy um, has, has passed. However, there's still a lot of rules to obey, and we have to do that. But he did say, unfortunately, in many other parts of the world, he said specifically Latin America, the virus continues to claim many victims. And then the Holy Father expressed his closeness to the victims, to their families, to the sick, and to all of those um, who care for them. So at this stage, folks, I, what I really want to say is I hope that, as they have done here, I hope your churches are reopening and soon the faithful can gather in good numbers and receive the sacraments again in person. So on that note, um, God bless you and back to you. Joan, thanks so much for that report there from Roman. It is wonderful to see the sun shining on Joan. She looks fabulous. Uh, on the people there and shining on Rome. And we'll yes. use that as, I think, as a double entendre. Mm. The sun mm. could be S-U-N or S-O-N. And so the sun is shining brightly there and we're just rejoicing. W what a powerful discussion today and topic. Thank you for your participation. Look for our Facebook posts going out when we have questions. And the question of the day was, how may sufferings, fear, and death be used as clues to give us hope for everlasting life? So let's examine. It's, sometimes it's the scene of the crime, the scene of the death, the scene of pain and injustice, and examine it more closely and look for the handprints, the fingerprints of Jesus. Not that he did it, but that he was there. I think of that, that poem or a little story that speaks about footprints in the sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this person had a dream and they said, Lord, I committed myself to you and I see two sets of footprints all throughout my life. But at the most difficult times, the saddest times, the times of my loneliness, the times of my greatest fear, there was only one set of footprints. Why, why Lord, did you leave me? Mm -hmm. Why did you leave me? because we're looking at it wrongly. And the Lord said something like, I, I love you. I would never leave you. At those times, your most trying times in your life, the saddest times in your life, the most painful times in your life, to when I carried you. To when I carried you. Let's look at it God's way. Let's be like Mary and look at these things that sometimes might be confusing. What are you asking of me to see my son die in this way? Or Jesus to be killed by his own family members. Joseph to be, to be sold in, into slavery and attempted to, to kill him, uh, except one brother stepped in. And yet Joseph said, what you meant for evil, God meant for mm. good. What you meant for a curse, God meant for a blessing. Now I'm going to provide for you all. I'm sure he didn't see that when he was in the well or wherever he was, but it was later that he said, I now see the fingerprints of God. I didn't have a clue. You may not have a clue now, but God's going to give you a clue. He's going to give you a thread to follow till it leads to the truth. And you'll find out that Jesus is not only the bread of life, he's the thread of life running all throughout your life and your history mm, amen. to everlasting life. You're an important part of this family and you're always at home with Jim and Joy. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.